Okay, so we're diving into something pretty interesting today. We're looking at the Israeli insurance market. Oh, okay. And honestly, it's a little puzzling at first glance. I mean, yeah. you've got war, inflation, all these things that usually spell trouble for an industry like this, right? Right. But then you dig into the numbers and some sectors are actually seeing record profits. At the same time, people are increasingly anxious about affording insurance, getting access to the care they need. It's kind of a paradox. Yeah. So to try to untangle this whole thing, we're going through some excerpts from the policy, the Israeli insurance, finance and pension newspaper, specifically the September 16th issue. And these aren't just your run of the mill headlines. These excerpts give us a real inside look, the kind of stuff you wouldn't catch unless you were really paying attention. We're talking about a surprising rebound in auto insurance profits, a big debate about private health insurance reforms, and even a pretty wild story about a jewelry heist that went all the way to court. Oh, wow. The auto insurance thing really caught my eye. They went from some pretty significant losses to record profits in just a couple of years, which is crazy. Yeah, it's a pretty remarkable turnaround. You see, during the pandemic, auto insurers were hit hard. Oh, why is that? Well, their pricing models, they rely on predictable driving patterns, and the pandemic just threw all of that out the window. Right, that makes sense. People weren't driving as much, obviously. But then when things started to go back to normal, accident costs and theft, they all went way up. And the insurance companies were caught off guard, basically. Exactly. Right. They just couldn't raise premiums fast enough to keep up with those rising costs. So how in the world did they manage to turn things around so quickly? Well, a few factors came together. First, they got pretty aggressive with premium increases, like way more aggressive. How much are we talking about? Over 60% in just three years. Wow. Yeah. It was a big jump. Then you had major players like Menorah and IDI, and they really started tightening their underwriting practices. Okay, for those of us who aren't insurance experts, could you break down what underwriting practices means exactly? Sure. Think of it like applying for a loan. The lender checks your credit score, your financial history, all of that to see how risky it is to lend you money. Right. Underwriting insurance is kind of similar. They're assessing the risk of insuring you, how likely you are to get in an accident, make a claim, that sort of thing. Yeah. So Menorah and IDI, they became much more selective about who they were willing to insure and how much they would charge. That makes sense. But, and this is where it gets even more interesting, they also got really serious about controlling their own costs. Oh, how so? They started scrutinizing those garage bills, looking for any little thing, made sure their spare part networks were efficient, really looking to cut down expenses wherever possible. Interesting. So they're kind of getting hit from both sides. Exactly. And they even got a little help from an unexpected source. Let me guess. Are you have to tell me that the Swords of Iron War actually helped their profits? You got it. <laughs> Though, to be fair, the data is still a bit iffy. I see. But it seems like with less travel, fewer cars on the road, especially in certain areas, driving and theft rates were probably impacted. Kind of a grim silver lining, wouldn't you say? That's one way to put it. But all of this makes me wonder, with these companies bringing in record profits, are we going to see some backlash, like public outrage, maybe even the government stepping in? It's definitely possible. I mean, this level of profit surge, it's not happening in other countries. Hmm. And the Israeli market is pretty concentrated with just a handful of big companies controlling most of it. Right. That kind of lack of competition, it tends to attract attention from the public and from regulators. Yeah, I can see that. It makes you really think about the balance between making sure people can afford insurance and letting companies, you know, be profitable. Absolutely. It's a tough question. No easy answers. Something I bet your listeners will have some thoughts on. For sure. And speaking of affordability challenges, let's shift gears to another hot topic. Private health insurance in Israel. We've got some pretty strong opinions in these excerpts, too. Mm. Uh, there's this piece by Dr. Udi Frischman. Right. And he argues that in Israel, private health insurance is not just some kind of extra, you know, a uh, luxury. Yeah. He's saying it's often essential if you want to actually get the care you need when you need it. That's exactly Frischman's point. He's really pushing back against this whole idea that private insurance is just, like you said, a perk for wealthy people. Right. He's saying, sure, public health care, good in theory. But in practice, wait times, access to specialists, even just having a say in your own treatment plan, it often falls short. Yeah. And that really resonates with what we hear from people even outside of Israel. 
You right. know? But obviously, this wouldn't even be a debate if private insurance wasn't so expensive. That's the heart of it, right? Have you felt the sting of inflation lately? Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Well, it's hitting health care costs, too. So you're stuck with this trade-off choice and quality. They come with a hefty price tag. That's where things get tricky. Okay, so where do the regulators come in? Well, they're trying to make private insurance more affordable, which, fair enough. But Dr. Frischman, he's worried these reforms could actually backfire. Backfire how? Well, his argument is if private insurance doesn't pay doctors enough, yeah. they're going to be less likely to work with private insurers, right? So fewer doctors taking those plans, which means even if you are willing to pay, the quality of care could go down, or you might just not be able to find a doctor who will even see you. Ugh. It's like a total catch-22. You want to make yeah. it more affordable, but then you risk impacting the quality for everyone. It's a problem a lot of countries are grappling with. You know? It's a tough one for sure. Okay, ready for a complete change of pace? Yeah, hit me. This next story is wild. We're talking about a jewelry store owner, an alleged robbery, millions of shekels, and a court case that just kept getting more and more interesting. Oh, this is a good one. This case, it really shows you the kind of challenges insurers face when it comes to fraud, you know? So you've got this guy, Ariel Pinasov. He sues his insurance company, Menorah Mift Tachem, for a whopping five million shekels. Five million? Seriously? Yeah, he claims his store was cleaned out, robbed, and that his wife was even assaulted during the whole thing. I mean, five million shekels, that's not exactly pocket change. Yeah. Did the insurance company just hand it over? Oh, not so fast. Menorah Miftakim, they weren't just going to roll over. They did their own investigation. Why? And guess what they found? They accused him of insurance fraud. Said he staged the whole thing. Are you kidding? What made them so suspicious? So it turns out, Mr. Pinasov, he's had some run-ins with the law before, shall we say. Oh, boy. Yeah, there were allegations of money smuggling, even. And get this, Menorah found out he conveniently forgot to mention some previous robbery attempts when he applied for the policy. Oh, yeah, that's not going to look good. Yeah, a pretty big red flag, to say the least. Okay, so right off the bat, some things weren't adding up. What about the robbery itself, though? Did they have any actual proof it was fake? Well, this thing went on for, get this, five years. Five years of legal battles. But Menorah, they were persistent. They presented all this evidence that totally contradicted Pinasov's story. Like what? They found inconsistencies in his testimony and his wife's. And get this, they even found evidence that they were involved in, wait for it, money smuggling. Can you believe I mean, it? man, truth is stranger than fiction. Oh. Uh -oh. So in the end, what did the court say? The court actually sided with Menor Miftachem. They said, yeah, this robbery was staged. And to add insult to injury, they ordered Pinasov to pay all the legal fees. Wow. What's fascinating to me is how much weight the court put on the witness testimonies and all those inconsistencies in Pinasov's story. That's what really swayed them. It's kind of like they say, right? The truth will out. This is a <laughs> wild story, right? I mean, it makes you realize that things aren't always what they seem especially when it comes to insurance. Yeah, no kidding. It really highlights that uh, that constant back and forth between insurance companies and people trying to, you know, pull one over on them. Totally. It's like a game of chess yeah. trying to anticipate those moves. Exactly. Well, we've covered a lot in this deep dive, haven't we? We have. I mean, soaring auto insurance profits. Then you've got this whole debate around private health care. And then just for kicks, a good old fashioned jewelry heist gone wrong. Right. Quite a ride. It really gives you a sense of like how complicated the insurance world really is, all these different factors. What strikes me is how how interconnected it all is. You know, you've got economic trends like we talked about with inflation. Then you've got global events like the war that are obviously having an impact. And then you throw in how people are behaving, what consumers are actually doing. It all plays into it. You have like this big web and you pull on one string and it affects everything else. Exactly. It really makes you wonder what other connections we're not even seeing, you know. Mm. But... Before we go totally down that rabbit hole, any final takeaways from these excerpts? Anything that really stood out to you? Well, on the auto insurance side, it'll be really interesting to see how regulators respond to these huge profits, right? Like, will they step in, try to control premiums, or will we see more competition? And that naturally drives prices down. Time will tell, I guess. <laughs> and then private health insurance, it feels like those reforms, the ones trying to make it more affordable, those are going to have a ripple effect. You know, it's not just about the cost of the insurance itself. 
Absolutely. I think the unintended consequences are what we really need to watch out for, right? Will it actually make things more affordable or will it be fewer doctors taking those plans, longer waits, maybe even worse care in the end? There are so many ways it could go. It's almost like more questions than answers at this point, wouldn't you say? Always more questions. That's what makes it so interesting. Yeah, that's a great point to end on, I think. This deep dive has definitely given us a lot to think about, that's for sure. And to our listener, we wanted to leave you with this. We talked about how something like a war, something you wouldn't expect, can have these ripple effects like impact in car insurance, right? So we're curious, what other hidden connections are we missing in our own lives? How could things like, I don't know, climate change or new technologies, how could those reshape the insurance industry down the line? Or even just the world in general. Keep asking those questions. You never know what you might discover 